mangled, twisted steel still smoking. This is the result of a bombardment by Western jets, an entire column of armor destroyed. These were tanks, fuel trucks, mobile rocket launchers, a truck carrying food rations, and this transporter lorry. It was carrying two tanks on the back. This is something the opposition fighters could never have hoped to achieve for themselves. This tank has literally been blown apart, a demonstration of the most sophisticated Western air power. Its turret has been thrown over here, some 20 meters away. About 14 bodies were recovered here, but not everyone died. There's military clothing, some of it shredded in the bombardment, but with no blood stains, evidence that some of the soldiers changed out of their uniforms and fled before the air attacks started. Opposition fighters are celebrating the name of the French president who pushed for the UN resolution and sent his jets in first is constantly mentioned. Western air power destroyed these tanks, but it's not the reason Benghazi was saved. That was the work of these men, many of them young volunteers with little or no military training, equipped with just small arms and rocket-propelled grenades. Yet with courage and daring, they repelled Gaddafi's forces and pushed them onto the desert road where it was then easy for the jets to target them. No one has yet counted the number of opposition fighters who were killed. It's thought at least 30 lost their lives. And in Benghazi's central square, the people turned out to pray for them. They're hoping Gaddafi's forces will not be able to threaten this city again. They believe they now have his troops on the run. We are starting to move to Jdabia, uh, Jdabia, Sert, Sert, Tripoli. The UN mandate for international action is clear to protect civilians, but just speak to these fighters. They believe it goes much further than that. They believe they now have their own air force equipped with devastating weaponry which will take them all the way to Tripoli.